Sometimes they each have a career and then they trade back and forth amongst works. So uh, there's always a wide variety of uh, relationships here. Uh, we do have two artists here. If you look at the beginning, the work starts still you know, I mean, your first impression is that the work is all by one artist, especially if it's referred to as Mackenzie Marcotte, which was a gallery that they had up in Wakefield, Quebec. Uh, but the longer you look, the more you can tell one piece from another. And so if you're doing tours, one of the things you can do is you can have the kids decide which one is which one. And uh, <coughs> there is a list there to tell you um, what uh, in uh, reality is which one, because sometimes you can get confused. Uh, of the uh, two, Maureen is the more conservative of the two, you might sit and say. She is the one that uh, does uh, the repeat patterns. The repeat patterns are uh, quite complex, and uh, as she said, um, she eyeballs them. This is what, this is the result of 40 years of practice. And so, um, and uh, the other thing is, is that uh, while they, they're both in some ways uh, functional potters, and functional potters generally work in a fairly uh, limited uh, repertoire. They've each developed their own personal style and their personal uh, idiosyncrasy. In, in idiosyncrasy. In, oh, oddities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, particularly, uh, Maureen is interesting because she's taken what would be the basic cylinder form uh, vase and she distorts them, and then, of course, she works her pattern around the distortions. Uh, so <clears throat> that becomes part of, of the, uh, the process. Uh, now, one thing about ceramics, especially when you work in the functional area, is, is that, uh, and one reason why we're still having people say ceramics aren't art, because there's the idea that art, uh, especially with painting and sculptures is that there's a constant progression within the work, uh, which uh, is a terribly Western <coughs> idea. It is not necessarily an Oriental idea where uh, things are looked in a much more circular manner. And so for a lot of uh, ceramists, the idea is, is that they can develop a style and then they will spend the rest of their life working that style, improving it, playing with it. Uh, one of the best examples of that uh, is um, Marilyn Levine, and we all know Marilyn Levine, who did our lovely ceramic suitcase, if you're familiar with that. Well, uh, early on, uh, because Marilyn was called a, uh, a sculptor when she uh, started showing in uh, New York City, um, they forgot to mention that she had been raised basically as a functional potter at one when she came to uh, when she came out of Regina. But she said that uh, you know ceramics is basically a cyclical <coughs> process where you repeat the same thing over and over again. It is not this continuous linear development. And uh, <coughs> over time this has been changing, but this is something to be aware of because people do think that, you know, you have someone like Picasso who started out, you know, as a late post-impressionist and then became a cubist and then went on and on and on, constantly changing his work. Mm -hmm. This is the idea. While everyone forgets that Picasso's 
partner in crime, uh, Georges Braque, who invented Cubism with Picasso, spent his entire life refining uh, uh, Cubism uh, to create a very personal style. Uh, now, both of these people are fascinated with pattern, and uh, this is where they end up having a great deal of freedom. Maureen uh, is much more regular. She does repeat patterns, uh, and uh, geometric and primarily floral patterns. Uh, and she uses a fair number of sources, and this is what gives her work the vitality, is where she decides to get her source. And so it can come from Amish quilts, it can come from Fair Isle sweaters, knitting. So there's a lot of textile uh, references here. Uh, Japanese kimono patterns, uh, weaving, uh, but also various artists. Uh, and the same with David. David is referencing a fair number of uh, various painters here. Painters who particularly use a lot of pattern. And so, uh, and with David, there is a quality which is sometimes more surreal than uh, Maureen's. But when you look at David's work, you can start to sit and see some of his, uh, his influences. And uh, they include people like uh, Paul Clay, Egon Schiele, uh, and um, Gustav Klimt. And so you have some uh, variety uh, there. And one has to take a close look at the work to sort of pull out the, uh, the patterns themselves because mm -hmm. they're, they're very dense and <clears throat> they're very flat in uh, nature. The other thing that uh, David does in particular is he's much more adventurous with form and so we have a wall there of his plates and you'll notice that there's not a regular plate in the entire uh, uh, selection there. I always think it's fascinating that he must have some idea of what his image is going to be when he makes the plate or he looks at the plate and decides how he can pattern it. So that, that's an interesting um, way to uh, look at that. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, once you uh, start dealing with uh, these artists, you realize that because they have decided that they're going to work in a fairly nar narrow range. What is it that, uh, you know, where they have freedom and where is they have decided to, you know, close down and concentrate on certain areas. And so you'll notice that they have a fairly limited palette and that they share the palette. So this is something that they uh, share uh, between them. Uh, part of that is pragmatic, just because how many goddamn closes can you uh, <laughs> Can you make? And uh, the other thing is, is that uh, you know uh, everyone has a personal palette, and these two basically share the same sort of personal uh, uh, palette. And so you'll notice there's the golds, the uh, the dark reds, the blues, the blacks, the olive green. Uh, but that's you know. Part of their personal uh, expression. Now, are there any questions you want to ask about this? So I don't really understand that much about pottery, but as far as the actual pattern, so they paint that on and then fire it. Is that yes, what they yes. do? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, rather okay. So when they paint it on, I just remember from that cup that we made, mm -hmm. the colors look very, very different. different. Yeah, so that's really interesting. I mean, really yes. amazing when you think about it. And then it depends on how on, <clears throat> on how you're doing. I think what she's done here is, is that she's used a wax. I think she's used a wax resist oh. and drawn. That makes sense. Basically, like a batik right? uh, yeah. pattern, uh, drawn the yeah. white grid pattern, and then she sits there and very carefully fills all these. Wow! Yeah. Uh, masochistic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the houses. That that is his. That is particularly his theme. Uh, that he loves these little landscape things. The other thing is to notice where he's hidden the cavorting nudes. Oh, <laughs> no, really? Yeah, they're, they're cavorting nudes all through the thing. It's, oh, um, well, oh, yeah. 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 And if you make a mistake with the glazing, you can can you? 
Like, oh, this is so, like, perfect. I mean, it probably isn't, but it looks perfect. I mean, can you, you know, if you were painting, you could well, yeah, you can, paint you, over. You, you, you can, can wash glaze off. Oh, okay. You can wash glaze okay. off. Uh, it's harder to, uh, with the wax, but I mean, all you do is you put the piece in a, in a kiln and the wax will burn off at a fairly low uh, um, okay. uh, temperature. And I mean, it burns out basically, and then you can start all over again. Mm. She wouldn't by any chance use a stencil, would she? No, she says that it's freehand. Well, you know, as she said, 40 years of practice. The other thing is, is that they're, uh, they're very upfront about their sources. And if you look on the wall there, there is the four, uh, nine uh, blue plaques. And it's the Picasso constellations. <laughs> So take a look at it carefully. You'll see, you'll see there the cavorting nudes in it, oh, each gorgeous. one of them. Yes. So. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Do they, do they still have a gallery? Uh, no, uh, it's. Um, I mean, a gallery is. A, you know, I mean, it, it, it in itself is a full time oh, yeah, uh, activity. Sure. I think they ran it for about five years. They so if we wanted to buy some of their work? Uh, you go to the front desk. Oh, <laughs> oh these are all for sale. You uh, can see the red dots. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're all for sale. Uh, go to the front desk, tell which one you want. They're really, they're fairly inexpensive yeah, for what they are. And uh, then make sure that um, <laughs> the chart is dotted. With the red the, with the red. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the, uh, the list is dotted and that it's done in the book. Yeah, must be. Several, several hours or days or weeks to come, come to fi finish a pattern like that? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, you, be, you, you it's amazing once you know how to do this, how quickly that it can be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, a, it, it is a very sort of do, 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 do. Uh, Start in the center and work out. Well, you know, wherever one starts on these things. <laughs> Jonathan, do we have... Any of their work in the permanent collection? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we have a David McKenzie plate, which uh, Ingrid Nikolai gave us before she moved off to Montreal. So that's about, uh, I mean, she gave it to us at least 10 years ago. And she had it uh, much, uh, you know, for many years. Uh, it's actually very interesting. His subject matter has, is, is exactly the same. I mean, he still has these sort of angular nudes in it, but the, uh, the glazed palette has changed over the years. Uh, the color has gotten richer and uh, less pastel, but I mean, basically, if, you, uh, if I brought it out, you could immediately sit and see that it was one of his pieces. And we have a uh, <clears throat> plate by Maureen, uh, and, which she did for one of the uh, Francophony summits which uh, when we had it in Canada how many years ago. So um, it was given to uh, all, all the delegates that, uh, delegates to uh, the Francophonie Conference. Are there any other questions? Jonathan, would you say that they're Quebec landscapes in, in some <sighs> of these sceneries or not necessarily? I would sit and say that um, having sit and seen uh, things like the Gustav Klimt landscapes. Oh, okay. okay. Which is technically art, mm -hmm. Austrian Art Nouveau, but it's... Uh, uh, and I mean, there's a certain aspect of his work which is uh, related to uh, Paul Clay, another uh, artist who did a lot of patterns. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, you know at what point does something, you know, you, everyone starts out from somewhere, no one yeah. ever starts out being original, everything, is, everything yeah. is based on something else. And over the years, you make it your own, so. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? All right, before you go, you have.